Joe Stevens. That is me. Give me a call right now at 1 800 252 1025. And of course, we will always be happy to talk to you. Uh, you can go to our website, lifecoach at kzok.com. Life Coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1 800 Divorce. Uh, let us go to Roy of Tacoma. Good morning, Roy. Hey, Ray. Good morning, Sunshine. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm looking at a different angle. Good morning, Sunshine. What can I do for you? Well, I've got a neighbor that I've lived next door to for eight years or so. And yeah. by the way, we're both we're both sober. We're not uh, we're not popping corks or anything like that. Okay, and so uh, apparently, there's a- something about this call is going to be really weird, and you're going to think I thought you were on drugs or alcohol. I can't wait to hear. It. What do you got for me? No, he's got three dogs, a Rottweiler that barks all the time, and I ended up after having talked to him numerous times to calling animal control. Right, that, he's got an all just. Right thing to yeah. do. Right, absolute right thing. Mind your temper. You're gonna want to do stupid things. Dogs. I have. A, I had a problem with my neighbor and a dog, uh, but it will only cause further problems. It's really smart of you to be the grown up and call someone. So what else? What can I do for you, Ray? What else happened was he got pissed off about that, and part of my yard is actually part of his yard. He decided to uh, stake his claim back to the part of the yard and rip out thirty feet of my shrubs and flowers and stuff that I had planted, and then start to um, build a fence again, which is fine because he needs to build a new fence to keep the dogs from looking at me, right. staring at me all the time. Right. But he vandalized all my stuff. Yes, he did. And, and I really don't have any recourse about that, but I don't know what to do it in the long run. is to try to be friends even though he ripped my sh- stuff out. Good catch, and, man. I appreciate that. Um. And then if the problem still persists, you know, I've got the paperwork to actually file if the dogs continue to be a problem, but that just let it simmer for a while and see what happens. After well, I don't, I don't love, up. I think you're doing all the right stuff. I just don't think simmering isn't good. I think eventually it's going to boil. And I have said this probably since day one of doing life coach. And you know, the joke is, it's not even a joke. It turns out to be true. Uh, if you have a problem, Danny's had it too. That's, that's completely true. And I've had this one more than once because I was the jerk. And I caused neighbor wars. So maybe I didn't cause them, but I escalated them to where no appropriate neighbor should have done that. And then at the ripe old image, maybe 30, 35, I realized you never win. Even if you think you won a neighbor war, you never win because eventually you're going to go out there to take the trash out. And there's going to be the neighbor who you beat them up in a neighbor war somehow. And you have to face them. And it's your own house. And you have to act sheepish. And that's not the way it should be in your own home. So the fact that you didn't start some kind of great war, over, and especially when you were right... Uh, you did the right thing, but I do have a question about the property value, a uh, property line. How sure are you that those property lines sit where you think they do? Oh, I lost them. I uh, sorry about the phone. cell phones aren't as good as they should be. If you're um, if you think he might be wrong about the property line, I, I want you to go to City Controller. I believe it is cityoftacoma.org. I actually played a city controller. That's why I know this. Unmarried with children. That's why I learned the word gerrymander. Who the hell knows what gerrymander means? Uh, so if you think that he might be wrong about the property, then check it out. It doesn't cost you anything because you're right. You do not have recourse over the, the bushes. Uh, and you probably do have recourse over the dogs, but if they're not menacing, if they're not a dragon, the best I can do so far is without escalating is commend you on being the grown-up and you're doing yourself a service that you don't hate being around your own house. Thanks, man. If you've got a question for the life coach, now is the time to call 800-252-1025. Any kind of problem you have, call and Danny will help you. Belinda in Seattle, you're on with Danny. Hey, Belinda. Hey how you doing today? Good. I think the name Belinda is adorable, by the way. What can I do well, for you? Thank you. It may not be my real name. But oh, it may uh, not. Well, you, pick, you picked one of my favorite Go-Go's. But I do But I do like the name, you see, in another life. Right. Real quick, I just got a new job near Queen Anne, and I take the train. I'm, I've never worked in the city, but my treat is I drove in today, and I get to listen to you guys for two hours. Okay, so. we're hey. loving Belinda of many names. Well, thank you very much. Love that. Okay, well, we had a conversation, my husband and I, yesterday. He's tired of hearing me vent. We have a boy who's 25, good kid, good job, just bought a duplex, dating a gal for five years. Super nice girl, likes to cook. Problem is, she doesn't want to do anything. She likes to stay in the house. Right. Um, you know, he likes to go out, have fun, karaoke, which you're supposed to do, you know. And um, he goes along with things. He's like me. He has the guilt. He likes to make everybody happy. Right. But I think it's wearing on him a little bit, you know. He works hard and... You know, what do you do? Like, as a mom, you know, I try not to butt in. It's hard, but 
you know, you're, five years is a long time in your life. You start getting to that point and, you know, how can you be with this person the rest of your life? If you like to go out and have a great time, they're happy with sitting in. And I don't know that he'll ever want to break her heart. Like, you go through your whole life with somebody just because, you know... Well, remember, part of this is is her burden. And I want you to take a second, uh, Belinda, and think about how lucky you are. Your son, who is healthy and not on drugs, like half of my phone calls are about, uh, he's not uh, uh, failing school or getting fired from his job. He likes to go out for Carrie freaking Oki. Uh, he's got a great girl. Her big thing is she likes to cook. These are what I call rich people problems, and it doesn't mean actually rich people. They're just problems that you make up because I got nothing else to complain about. I think I'm going to complain because everything's going perfect. Your son, perfect just as God made him. His girlfriend, perfect just as God made him. But here's the thing about feeling guilty because I got that. Um, I don't like to go out anymore. Those I just I just want to sit home and watch cooking shows. As exciting as that is, uh, I talked about it this morning that I actually went out and got some pants for this wedding. That was my big venture into society. <laughs> so I turned off the TV and went out to Tommy Bahamas. Uh, the thing is, she does like it. You know, I, I I'll be I'm just guessing at the age of 25 that she does like it. And I said to my lovely wife, who's 31. I said, I wish you really had a best buddy. Somebody who could go, and I'm going to meet uh, 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 Becky for, for drinks, honey. And then you go out with your friend Becky and complain about how bad your husbands are. And then come up to me and be a great wife, because she is. But I wish she'd go out more. I'll bet your son's girlfriend almost wishes he'd go out after five years. Honey, go have fun. I feel like a burden that you go don't go out and have fun anymore just because I want to stay home. The, you know, your kid's a good kid and lucked out. The answer to this problem is... Uh, take his girlfriend's wishes and go out when he feels like it, not to a point where it's uh, you know he's ignoring her, but she wants him to go out. She wants to be left there and watch TV and cook. He should go and find out for a fact if that's the way she feels, and if so, they should remember how lucky they are. But that's the answer. He should go out and just don't do anything stupid. Don't cheat. Don't lie. Don't get a drunk driving ticket. Uh, let her cook and her watch her shows, and he can, can sing karaoke, and then they can tell each other about each other's day. You really don't have a problem there. Good luck, Belinda. Thanks for the phone call and the compliments. It's funny how concerned she is. I remember my my oldest brother has super high energy, and he loves to go out and if he had married somebody just like him he'd be out all yep, the time absolutely. he'd drink more than he should he'd stay out later than he should and his wife is more of a homebody yep. and it helps keep him like on the up and up so that he doesn't over overindulge yeah i just want to stay home and find out who wins top chef that's my <laughs> that's really my whole life man <laughs> If you've got a question for the Life Coach, 800-252-1025 or email lifecoach at kzok.com. Ben in Tacoma sent an email. I have been engaged with my partner for uh, seven years and she doesn't like me talking to other women, whether they're married or not. Um, after this period of time, don't you think uh, she should get over this? Yeah. Uh, is she over possessive? Is yep. this relationship over? Nope. Uh, it's never really, over. even if somebody cheats, it's not definitely over. So everybody stop thinking about, well, I, I don't stop thinking because then you won't call the life coach every morning and I need you to. But the answer to a huge dilemma is not always and not even that frequently of should I leave? Is this relationship dead? Yeah, this is a huge problem. And you're, if there has to be somebody that's right and wrong, you're in the right. The world consists of 52% women. That's the way that is going to go. Uh, if, and and you've, you've given me an email. I have nothing to go with what you said, but you've given me no indication that you've cheated, you've lied, you've been found with strange phone numbers in your pocket. Uh, but they've been engaged for five years. Maybe she's worried because he hasn't pulled the trigger yet. That's, that's a very good question. But you've done nothing, nothing to deserve this. Uh, I've dated many a girl that were jealous, and I thought it was quaint. But at the end of the day, it turns out I was giving them stuff to be nervous about. If you are not giving her stuff to get nervous about, you need to, to let her go. You don't want to wave it in their face, even if you're not doing anything wrong. If it makes her feel bad, she, she's the girl that you allegedly love, man. There's no reason to, to you know have these women in front of her face. But at a normal amount of times, you can absolutely talk to women and she will have to learn to deal with. I thought, you know what? I used to go out a lot when Sarah and I first got together. Uh, we didn't know each other. And we're going to do a show where all it is about how much we know each other. Well, who's going to say what? What's going to happen? And Sarah and I would go out for drinks really often. If anybody would have said anything to me about that, 
I'd have at first gone, I understand. I am spending time with this woman. On the second part, and this is what I'm reminding you of, be a much more gentle version of this. Are you out of your mind? I gotta talk to this woman for my freaking job. So the, the girls are not gonna go away as long as you're not doing anything wrong. And she has to open her mind, but you have to be gentle and nice so you don't hurt her feelings. All right, that is all the time we have. No, with, oh, I have a call. I don't even take my We've got time for one more caller. It's Valerie in Marysville. Hey, what's up, Valerie? Hey. Yeah, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Well, I hate to say this, but I've been married for almost 18 years, and um, I have really grown apart from my husband. And I feel terrible, but I love him, but I'm not in love with him anymore. Right. And I feel like I need to separate. We have kids involved. How old? Uh, my oldest is 11. Yeah, okay. And and I have eight and nine-year-old. So what is your question for me, Valerie? How do you tell somebody this? How do you go about breaking somebody's heart like that? Oh, we try not to. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, unless you did it on temp. Uh, it's not a terrible thing to do because you don't have any malice, you know, but it needs to be done. Uh, you don't love him anymore. You deserve a life. You don't think he's done anything wrong. You're not calling him any kind of names or anything like that. It's just, it's time to move on. And, uh, you know, uh, what age, Bray? I don't want to ask your age, but what approximately age range are you in there, Valerie? I am 37. Yeah, at 37, you're so young. And the idea that you're going to go, well, I love him. We've got kids. I'm not, I better just stay. No, you know, as your life coach and your friend, I'm going to say, you kind of got to go. I like your husband. You're not complaining about him. He seems like a fine guy, but you have to go. The way you tell him is you'll know, you figure it out. Here's the way you start by telling him, sweetheart, it's been so long. I think we've kind of grown to be more friends than husbands and wives. And I'm, you know what? Maybe I'm looking for something more. I love you more than anything. You're a great husband. You're a great father. I got to go. Now, you take what I just said, and you whittle them down to exactly what you need to say to actually pull this trigger. But pull it. Don't start this conversation and get talked back into it. He says, but I love you. I'll change. I'll, I'll bring you flowers. It'll be great. You got to actually pull this trigger. You need to go. You deserve sky rise. Everybody deserves that stuff. And you settle. You shouldn't settle. You're the roadmap for don't settle. Go ahead and move on with your life. And God bless you for knowing at 37, you got to do this. Hey, thank you. That's all the time we have for Danny Bonadici, uh, Life Coach today. Life Coach, of course, brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. <laughs> 